Hi, I'm Jill Johnson Young. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in Riverside, California. I co own Central Counseling Services in Riverside and Marietta. And in addition to being a grief therapist and a keynote speaker, I also write books. And some of them are for children about grief and loss and death and dying, pet loss, dementia, all the fun stuff. I decided to read some of these books here on video at the request of some other therapists who are working with children who are facing loss. This book is called Someone I Love Just Died. What happens now? As a hospice social worker, a therapist, a mom and a grandma, I know how important it is to cope with loss. It is one of the most important lessons we can teach our children. It's part of every facet of life. When they learn how to manage, when any kind of loss occurs, including the death of someone they love, they can begin to integrate that into their understanding of the cycle of life. More importantly, they will know not to be afraid of talking about the loss and about what happens when someone dies. I wrote this book because children always do better with information. What they don't know, they will imagine. And many times imagination makes things so much scarier if adults seem hesitant or stressed out. Talking with them, answering their questions, and encouraging them to continue to talk about the person who died will allow your children to keep their loved one a part of their lives as they grow up. It's a lesson they will never forget. I wish you well as you teach your children one of the most important lessons in life, how to cope with loss. May your family's journey through grief end in peace. Everyone is busy doing stuff and looking sad. I'm sad too. I miss them. The big people are talking about funerals and music and flowers. People I don't even know are dropping off cookies and food. They tell me to be strong. They all seem to want to hug me or kiss me or something. And I don't even know them. I'm supposed to not make noise so they can make arrangements and make about a million phone calls. They are making plans. There's going to be a viewing and a funeral and then we all go to the cemetery. Some of them seem upset or mad or something. They should be getting along, shouldn't they? I really wish I could help. I don't know what I'm supposed to do or how to act. I just wish they would all go away. I feel all jumbled up inside. I don't want to bother anyone. They're upset too. Somebody told me God needed another angel. If he did, then he could decide to take someone else. You know what else? They aren't in a better place. It would be better if they were here with me. It would be better because then none of this would be happening. They would not be dead. I'm going to miss my team's practice today. Nobody has time to take me. I really just wanted to see my friends. Some of my friends have had someone die. They would understand me more than the other big people. And my friends wouldn't make me keep talking about this. They just let me play. I missed practice. 
My sister missed gymnastics. My brother missed swimming. Oh, but none of them are happy. My brother and sister are acting weird. My sister cries and looks sad sometimes. My brother is playing lots of video games because nobody notices how much time he's spending on them. We're going to go buy suits for the boys and a dress for my sister. She doesn't even like dresses. When we asked why, why all the weird clothes, they said we would be pallbearers at the funeral. That's why we had to dress up. Our job is to walk out of the funeral with the casket. Someone said they would show us how. It also means a lot of people are going to be looking at us and staring at us. On the night of the visitation, we all went to the mortuary. Some people call it a funeral home. The doors were open and there was a casket in the front with lots of flowers. My friend said their family had one for their grandma at their church. Another friend said they didn't even have one. There was a little book to write our names in it and people were talking or whispering. My brother walked right up to the casket and looked in. My sister didn't want to, so she stayed in the back with our aunt. I stayed in the back for a while, and then I walked to the front. The casket was silver with shiny handles. It was white inside with soft fabric. The person I loved was inside laying down with their head on a pillow. I thought I might be scared, but it wasn't scary. They were just there. After lots of people came, we went home. We got ice cream on the way. Our parents said we deserved it after such a long evening. The next morning, we got up and got dressed in our new clothes after breakfast. Someone brought donuts with sprinkles. The grown-ups were trying to be cheerful, but I could see they were a little sad. We went back to the mortuary, and someone in a dark suit gave us gloves to wear and pinned flowers on us. My sister was put in charge of people signing the little book from last night. They had all of us line up around the silver casket before anyone got there and showed us how to help take it out after the funeral was over. They told us we would help at the cemetery, except some of us weren't tall enough. Our job was just to walk with them. There was music playing, and we sat right at the front. I guess I didn't realize how many people I have in my family. We took up a lot of spaces. I looked at the casket so I didn't have to see everybody looking at us. There were prayers. Someone talked about the person who died. And more people said nice things about them. One of them was really funny. We sang some songs, and then the people in the dark suits came up and closed the casket. They told us to come up front. We stood there while, where they pointed and walked past everyone with the casket. I watched to make sure the flowers didn't fall off. Then they put the casket in a car that opened in the back and slid it in on a big tray thingy. Some of the people got in a big car all together. I got in our car with my parents and we drove to the cemetery in a big line called a procession. 
there were people on motorcycles to make sure we stayed together. When we got there, the people in the dark suits were already there. And there was a big tent. And you could, like you would take to the beach. And it was covering everything so you had a place to sit in the shade. We lined up at the car where we put the casket in the mortuary. It's called a hearse. The dark suit people opened the door and helped everybody pull it out. We walked it to the silver stand. That was over the hole in the ground. We made sure it was not going to fall. I was peeking underneath to see how it worked. I could see my mom using her eyes to tell me not to get too close. Then everyone sat down on the folding chairs. I stood on the side with the other kids. We heard more prayers and some more words, and then it was over pretty quickly. It felt a little weird to be leaving the casket behind on the stand. They told us it was okay and that the people would stay and make sure everything was taken care of. My sister took a rose from the top to keep as a memory. When we got home, there were people there and more food. We went outside to play and the grown-ups brought us food to eat so we didn't have to stay inside and talk. Some of our friends came over and we told them about everything and ate brownies together. My friends brought a ball and we all played together. One of my friends said that they went to a funeral that wasn't a funeral. It was a celebration of life and there was no casket. Their loved one was cremated and they were in a stone jar with a top on it and their name carved into it. They went to their church for their celebration and the food was there too. They thought brownies in their own yard sounded way better. One of my cousins said a friend of his also had been cremated, but they scattered their ashes in the ocean. Their celebration was on the boat and they threw flowers into the sea. Then they all went out for lunch together. I asked what cremation went, meant. They said it was when the person died, their body went into a big heater and that turned it from a body into ashes. The ashes can go in the jar or the sea or a cemetery like we went to today or even just stay at home if someone wants to keep them there. We talked about it while we kicked the ball. And one of my cousins said she wants to be cremated and to be scattered at Disneyland so all of us can go and visit and be happy. I kind of don't think that's allowed. It's not. But I like her idea. I just don't want her to die. When everyone started leaving, I helped take out the tr lots and lots of trash and to clean up. My dad ordered a pizza for dinner. We watched a movie. I was a little worried all night. Before I went to bed, I asked my mom if she was going to die. She told me everybody does at some time, just like our dog Maggie last year. Nobody gets to live forever here on earth. She said she was not sick and nobody else was. And then even though we don't know exactly what's going to happen in life, she was pretty sure we would all be here for a really long time. And she hoped I would not use that time to fight with my sister, no matter how much she annoyed me. Then we read a story and it was bedtime. I was so tired. We all had moments when we were sad for a while. My mom cried when a song played on the radio. My sister wouldn't watch some of the same TV shows she used to. I felt bad that I was mad about missing my game more than sad about the person dying. My dad said that was normal and he didn't blame me for being mad. He said next time, if there was a next time, he would make sure I got to my game. 
Next week, it will be a year since they died. We're going to do something that day. Some of my cousins are coming because their parents aren't planning anything. I'm hoping it will be a trip to the lake where we can play, have a barbecue, and remember them at a place that we shared. I don't want to be sad they are dead. I want to be glad they were here. My sister wants to plant a tree at the lake so we can all watch it grow and remember them. I really like that idea. We can go back to the tree whenever we want and remember what we learned from them. I can remind my sister how much she looks like they did. My cousin can brag about throwing a ball like they did. My brother can laugh about the funny jokes they had together. We can remember them and keep them with us, always. Thank you for listening to this. There are some helps for adults in the back of the book. I'm not going to read them now, but all of my children's books have words that are important to be used so that kids can learn the right information, the right lingo, and understand what the words mean. If we take the mystery out of it and make it part of life, we all do better with grief and loss. We all do better with death and dying. And we all do better the next time there is a loss because there always will be one. I hope this helps you and your family, and I hope that you'll share it for anyone else who might need it. You can find me at jilljohnsonyoung.com, at therebelliouswidow.com, at centralcounselingservices.com, and at the Friday Grief Chat on Facebook. Thanks. Bye-bye.